Hi, today we're going to run through how to do a software update using the Mongoose GM Pro Lead um, in conjunction with a subscription to GM, GME Infotech's website. So the first thing we do is have everything prepared because we're only going to buy an hour subscription. So have the vehicle ready, have the battery support unit connected, have everything set up before you do this because we'll be limited with time. So we're going to go to um, service parts, service and parts information programming software. So we're going to go for one hour. So we click on it for one hour and make sure you're clicked on Vauxhall and Opel up here. Because we're doing this on a 2005 Opel Bavario van, 1.9 diesel van. So we go, just make sure no other boxes are clicked and go OK. So, it's telling this proper order in here, uh, one hour is eight euro and a handling fee of 31 cent for payment. So now I just uh, skip through where we entered our Visa card details and uh, your payment has succeeded, your subscription has been created. So we'll go to available subscriptions. And now you see we, we have we already had subscribed for the GDS software, GDS diagnostic software, and here you can see we have the service and parts information and programming software. So we only have 59 minutes left. So the first thing we do um, is we connect the vehicle to a battery support unit and have it set to about 13.6 volts. Um, the next thing then is we go into our Make, uh, make sure you have your laptop plugged into the charger and go into the power settings on the laptop um, and we go power options and uh, we want to make sure that the laptop won't go into standby or screensaver modes or anything like that so we go to plan settings so dim the display when plugged in never turn off the display when plugged in never put the computer to sleep never so that's that's all okay so now we're sure that the laptop won't, won't shut down or, or, or go into hibernation in the middle of doing this. So now we go um, EPC is the parts catalog. So we don't want that. So we put TIS. Now it's uh, news available. Um, so we just go okay we don't want to view the news so now here we have our our different options service and diagnostic information this like checking procedures and things labor time um, uh, times so what we're looking for is the SPS service programming system so we'll and then we go start SPS okay Um, it's rec <coughs> recommended if possible to have your computer uh, connected with a LAN cable to the internet instead of wireless because if, if your internet's reliable and your wireless is, is working well there shouldn't be any problems with using a wireless but just as another precaution we recommend plugging it in So now it's come up, MDI not installed, Tech 2 J2534 driver not installed. We're not going to install them because we're using neither of these two, two, two units. We're not using MDI interface or the Tech 2 driver. We're using the Mongoose leads. We'll go skip. So now we're in, the software is ready to go. Um, it's for picking up the different type of interfaces that we've used with this software on this laptop before. Because um, we've used Autoland, iScan2WT with this, the bigger Cardag interface. This is for the tech, 
if you're using the Tech 2 handheld diagnostic tool as a pass through, but we're going to be selecting the GM GM Mongoose Pro Lead. So in this case, we're just going to check for software updates. We're not replacing the ECU, so you have two options: either reprogram ECU, so it's just going to be updating the software in it, and this is replace and program ECU. So we're just reprogram ECU. Go next. Connect the J2534 device to the PC, turn off, turn ignition off, verify vehicle battery fully charged, but we'd recommend putting the battery support unit on it also to keep it a stable 13.6 volts. Uh, turn the ignition on, engine off, connect your J2534 device, in this case we're using the Mongoose. After programming, the technician will be given the opportunity to clear diagnostic trouble codes from all ECUs on this vehicle. The technician may want to record DTCs and freeze frame data before continuing. Um, we did connect to this one with the diagnostics first, uh, just to make sure there was no, no other codes stored and we cleared all the fault codes. Go next. Select the make, so Opel. This is a 2005. Opel Vivario. Now it's communicating with the, the mongoose lead. Uh, so after picking up the chassis number, um, you'd always want to look at the chassis number in the vehicle and confirm that it's the right one. Six one. Yep. So that's correct. We'll go next. So now the options we have is uh, VCAP vehicle wide capture of module ident identification data or engine control module. In this case we just want to check see if there are any software updates from engine control module. So go engine control module, uh, programming, um, programming type normal, we'll go next, communicating with the device. Picked up the engine code, uh, country of registration, there's only two, mm, there's more options, but ours is other, so other. Go next. So now it's telling us the version that it's on, so we can see it's 820038 and this one is 820077 So this is a, a later version. Unfortunately, it's not telling us the description of why this later version was brought out. In some cases, it might display here that the the reason for the software update, for example, if it was a hot start problem or if the vehicle was logging strange fault codes, there might be a software update to fix it, or uh, it could be just widening uh, fault logging cr criteria for, for a particular sensor or actuator. Uh, we've said there's various different reasons for software updates, but in this case it's not giving us why, so we'll just go ahead, go next. So you can see up here it's after downloading it from the server, it's, f it's fully downloaded, and now in, in this part here it's loading it to the ECU. So it's saying we have 10 minutes left. Um, so we'll just let it run through. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention is to make sure all accessories are turned off. Uh, interior lights, fans, radios, everything like that is turned off. Even keeping the doors closed. Don't let anyone open the doors because a small spike in the or a load and the voltage can upset can upset it when it's program. Now we'll just come back <coughs> there for the remainder of the download is taken there about ten minutes. Um I'll just pause it so to make the video shorter. Uh, 
Uh, with this uh, this vehicle, I had no particular problems, but um, we just checked on it to see did it need a software update. It was just a good chance of showing how this worked. Um, but there have been problems with these 1.9 Vivarios where they had a cold start and cold running problems, and um, there was a software update issued to fix this. Um, yeah. Programming complete, warranty claim code, record this word with warranty, so it's not warranty anyway, so post program instructions, follow the controller specific instructions below, if there are no controller specific instructions, turn ignition off for 30 seconds to reset the controller, so there's no controller specific instructions, so we just follow that instruction, turn the ignition off for 30 seconds. So then we can just go either cancel or new or we can print. So I'm just going new. Now if we want now we can check to see did the update actually go in go into the vehicle. So select the interface type again, your program ECU, go next, same instructions again, next make year model chassis number displayed next Build, make open next engine control module programming normal next communicate with the device country registration and F9Q the calibration selected is the current calibration in the control module so now we're after proving that the update did actually work and it's gone into the module so current software is the same as the selected ECU software. Um, also, it said during this it was going to give us an opportunity at the end to read and clear the file codes, but it hasn't done that. So we need to just put in our diagnostics, either uh, with the tech to win later on to make sure there's no code stored. So we'll just go cancel. Yep, so that's it. Um, so um, we pause there for a moment and check the codes. There's no code stored. Thanks for watching and keep an eye out for some of our other videos.